Hi, I'm Paul from High Tech Training. Just going to show you a little bit about the 555 timer. So I'll show you a little circuit that we built using the 555. So uh, 555, the reason they call it the 555 is that there are three resistors inside in the in the timer chip and each one of them is 5K ohm. So that's where the name came from, 555. So our little circuit here, I'm going to show you this little circuit here, how it works. And this is uh, going to build up in an A-stable multi-vibrator circuit you have three types of multi-vibrators you have a stable monostable and bistable anyway this is the a stable one here and we've little oscilloscope so we'll monitor what's going on there in a few minutes uh, so this is a breadboard here a breadboard a prototyping board we use this to uh, build circuits on and our trainees and our courses are provided with these to, to build up various circuits and test out how they work Anyway, main thing here is we've got a battery on the side, 9 volt battery. We're going to run our um, system from that. This is a breadboard, a prototyping board. Uh, all of the terminals here are joined in groups of five. So you can put two devices into the one hole, like of the right hand side of a capacitor here. The same group of five as a resistor. So they're electrically connected together with zero ohms in between, approximately. So the breadboard, um, everything's groups of five, except for the blue line here runs all the way along. As far as there, we need to link it over with a little piece of wire. We link to the blue continuing on. Same with the red here on top. We're using a red going all the way across. We link it with a little, little link here and goes all the way on the red there. So we're using the red for a positive supply, black for the negative supply. So we put power onto the circuit here and see what it does for us. So hopefully there's power on it now and this should be working. So the schematic diagram of this is here. Uh, it shows a nine volt supply anywhere around nine will do this is the 555 chip which is this is your little chip here with the eight pins pin one here is the one with with the little dot on the side um so the output is here going on to a resistor is loaded 10k load we got a little capacitor in series there electrolytic capacitor polarized one microfarad capacitor here's your timer onto that well there's a few pins going on to supply you have pin eight and pin four going on to your your nine volt supply so on the circuit we built here pin eight there's your pin eight pin eight one two three four five six seven eight there is going on to your supply also pin four here this orange wire is going up to your supply your nine volts running along here positive so we come along and then we go through a resistor here we got a 1k resistor we've put in a fairly high power 1k resistor there it doesn't need to be that high power I'll just show you high power resistor um, so you have your 5 volts coming along, go through this resistor, brown, black, red, 1K, and that is going on to pin 7. That's pin 7 there. You see pin 7 then is joined to pin 6 via an 82K resistor here, uh, grey, red, orange. That's it there, you're 82 between pins 7 and pin 6. Then you've got pin 6 and pin 2 joined together, right? So there's your pin 6 here, joined to pin 2 via the green wire here. Uh, Pin two goes to ground via 100 nanofarad capacitor, these small little capacitors here. So pin two here is pin two, the ground. Ground is your, your blue line here at the end. Uh, pin one is the ground, that's pin one. Uh, I'm a little gray wire here inside here, bring that to ground. Um, pin five via 100 nanofarad capacitor. So there's the pin five, another 100 nanofarad capacitor down. Th these values here can change depending on the frequency that you want out of this device, incidentally. Anyway, uh, pin three then um, comes out here via the one microfarad capacitor. Pin three onto the one microfarad through that and a low there, 10K load, uh, brown, black, orange, 10K resistor here on the output for, as our load. Um, I think that's about it. So that, that's, that, that's the connection of it. And you can change the values here to get a different uh, output from this. So first of all, we just have a look on the uh, multimeter first of all so just get a multimeter for a second put it on here on top of our little oscilloscope and see what's happening with this so we go to our dc volts range we just look at our supply here voltage and see what our supply voltage is first of all so i'm going to put a ground and this little handy wires put onto my my meter here so put a ground on there my blue so hopefully getting some supply going into this so we'll check the supply voltage coming in so we're coming in there on around 7.3 volts, yes, a little bit down, but that's fine, right? This will run maybe 7, 8, 9 volts, 10 volts, is no problem at the 5 for 5. So 7.3 volts in. I look at my output voltage here then on pin 3. Pin 3 is my output for the capacitor. So I just look at that. Pins 1, 2, 3 here. I'm getting 3 volts out. So you see I'm only getting 3 volts out. Well, the reason I'm getting 3 volts out is that this thing 
is giving us out a square wave. So it goes up, down, up, down, up, down. So we have seven volts as our supply. So half of seven is roughly three. And that's my up, down, up, down on that. So that means we get positive, negative, positive, negative coming out. So that would indicate that I've got a changing voltage coming out, even though it reads DC. I could go to my AC supply here also, and it should read something for me on my AC supply. Getting six volts AC come out, coming out of this alternating. Um, now, I mean, we think that's what it is according to the meter, but if we really want to be absolutely 100% sure, we should go to our oscilloscope. So I'm just going to take away the meter there. Take away the meter, bye bye meter. So we go onto our oscilloscope here and um, look at the connections on it. So I've got the scope here with them. Um, so just put a wire onto the positive of the probe, the negative here, put a yellow wire on that. Put negative here down to blue at the end to get um blue line at the end just to get a negative reference point. We look at the output here, go to my pin three as my output again. There. Uh -huh. And we're getting some sort of some sort of a square wave coming out here. So that's looking fairly fantastic, really. Um you've got your output low here and you go up high. So I'm getting a square wave out. So it means that uh it's producing a waveform just to see that this really is working, that not making it up. Just take the power off here for a second. And that disappears then, yes, and put it back on. Hopefully it's back again. There it is. So if I want to see see more of these, um, I can just go to my auto set here. If I want, and that might show us a few more waveforms. And you've got a fairly good um, square wave up and down there. A little bit of noise on top, but not bad. Uh, I can adjust the oscilloscope to uh, make it a bit more uh, easy to see. So the frequency, this is 86.6 hertz, right, which is like a little bit less than 100 hertz. And... Um, it's also telling us the 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 peak-to-peak the -peak voltage of, of the device, right? Of here, peak-to-peak, -peak, some top peak to bottom peak. And this is the average as well, which is obviously about half of that. Okay. Um, so that's it really. I, I can hold this here if I wanted to put a hold on that, just, just hold the waveform for us. And um, you can look at the, the oscilloscope if you want, and you can look at the the squares on it. So you have eight squares going up and you've got 10 squares across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here the measurement, it'll tell you that each square is 500 millivolts going up, 500 millivolts. Okay, so like each one that's 500 from there to there is 500, which is half a volt. Another half a volt, which is one volt. Another half, one and a half volts. You've got one and a half volts up. That's your positive peak there. Then you go to, to zero volts for a while. We go back up again and, and to your positive peak again, and we go one and a half volts there again. It's one and a half volts up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, and um, we've also got the frequency going along. So the the the, the, the measurement for that is uh, milliseconds. So we're on uh, horizontal two milliseconds. Millisecond is a thousand part of a second per box. So this one is two milliseconds. Two, four, six, eight. 10 about 12 milliseconds across there this one is slightly late starting there so if you work out frequency over time you can or time over frequency you can work out the frequency 86.6 hertz which is like you know that's the frequency that this is producing for us again if you change some of the components here on this side um you can get a different frequency out but it's looking like fairly good you know it's a fairly good good sine wave coming out there in the scope like is, is very good to to show you what's what's going on. So th that's it, we just the 555, and this is set up in the A-stable mode. A-stable means not stable. So not stable means changing. You can see that this here is changing up and down the whole time, right? Up and down, up, down, up, down. And uh, I can show more of those if I want to, show more cycles or less cycles, whichever I want to do, the less cycles. Go here, more cycles, yeah, more cycles. You just show them all in there. But when you, when you have too many in together, they all go in together and you, you, you can't see them. So it's uh, it's better to, elongate the waveform a little bit just to make it more usable to uh, have a look at okay and there we should be there yeah they're all there now okay so that's that so the five, five five so hopefully you enjoyed look at the the five 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 there so um you know if uh, you might look at our youtube channels some other videos on there as well that you might find of use so uh listen thank you for watching